Hello, bonjour and welcome to your new RT1 Exchange video. Welcome to this channel where we explore together and we explain and taste the wonderful world of fine and rare wine. So after looking into the fine wines from Bordeaux, Burgundy, Champagne in France today, with this new episode recrossing the French Alps to start a series about the extraordinary diversity and to talk about the unique personality, or maybe I should say the very varied wine personalities that are found all around Italy. So we're talking about the biggest wine producing country in the world here before France. And boy, there is more than one extraordinary gem to talk about here. So it'll take a few episodes to get around all the country. So welcome to this journey. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes about Italy and beyond. And stay tuned to learn more about the fantastic Italian vinos or vini. I should probably say that's how the Italians say it. Today, before we start getting into the details of specific wine styles and wine regions, I just want to give you a quick overview, a glance of the incredible diversity Italian wines has to offer. So let's go and get right into it. Italy, overall being this boot in the Mediterranean Sea, enjoys of course a Mediterranean climate which is generally speaking say more suitable for producing red wines and that's part of why Italy is perhaps most famous for its red wines of course. Or is it? Two of Italy's most popular styles around the world are actually a white sparkling wine which is of course, you've guessed it, Prosecco and a still white wine, you've guessed it, Pinot Grigio. We should probably add actually another Italian bubbly or spumante, how they say in Italy, to these top three most popular Italian vinos, and that's or vini, as we say, and that would be Moscato, of course. See, there's loads of surprises coming out of Italy, and it's certainly not all red at all. To explain why this is, it must be said that virtually all sparkling wines in Italy are made in the north of the country, where it's obviously cooler, therefore more suitable for producing crisp and refreshing and zingy sparklings. So yes, Moscato and Prosecco are star bubblies from Italy. Those are made respectively in the Piedmont region, for Moscato to the northwest of the country, and the other Prosecco in the Veneto near the city of Venice. That's to the north, but to the east. We must add here that the sparkling red wine is also really popular and that's called Lambrusco. Also made in the north, but more around the center in the Emilia Romagna region near the great city of Verona. In our episode specifically dedicated to the fine wines from Italy, the sparkling fine wines that will come very soon, we'll cover which are the best styles among those. Is there some specific areas, appellations or mentions on labels that you should look out for to get the best of the best Italian sparkling vinos? We'll look into this and that'll lead us to talk about this area that is clearly lesser known outside of Italy. The Italians know it really well, but probably or perhaps you don't, but arguably this is the one region that makes the very best bubblies in the country and that's Francia Corta, a very clear competitor to the French Champagne. So don't miss that future episode that we'll make about Italian bubbles in particular. We'll get into more details. But those four northern styles of sparkling wines pretty much cover the whole bubbles that are made in Italy. That's it. Prosecco, Moscato, Francia Corta and Lambrusco. We've already demonstrated this, I think, with chapter one, right? Italy is not only a red wine producing nation, far from it, in fact. Good whites are produced everywhere around the country. Perhaps Italy doesn't have these extraordinarily fine white producing regions or very fine white wine styles like France does with Burgundy, Alsace or the Loire, and that's probably why Italian white's reputation isn't that flamboyant. But most Italian wines are very good, and there are many illustrious appellation names 
all over the country. And I guess for a quick overview and to really demonstrate this and get the point across, let's mention some of the main styles of very reputable whites, a lot of which are DOCG level, which is the highest level in the Italy wine classification system. So those names would be, to name a few, some of the very reputable ones, Gavi and Ruero in the northwestern region of Piedmont that we, we've already mentioned, Suave in Veneto to the northeastern center, many fantastic whites in the Alto Adige to the very north in the Alps near Austria and from Friuli, that's how it's said, that's to the very northeastern end near Slovenia. Plus, we already mentioned the hugely popular Pinot Grigio from Veneto. That's for the north. There's Vernaccia in Tuscany, like with the Vernaccia di San Gimignano. Some delicious Trebbiano from Tuscany as well as from Abruzzo. Or Verdicchio from Marche. And of course, Orvieto in Umbria. All of those to cover around the center of Italy. There's Frascati that is made near Rome, so that's a little further south, around the center, but south, maybe the south of Italy is not so big on whites indeed, like in Puglia or Campania that don't make a lot of strikingly reputable whites, with the exception of Fiano di Avellino in Campania near Naples. But Sicily makes some pretty good, interesting whites, mainly from local grapes, such as Cataratto, Grillo or Inzoglia. So that's a lot of important names in the world of white wine coming out of Italy, right? Too many to be disregarded and enough for enthusiasts like ourselves to explore and enjoy for a very long time, don't you think? Well, we'll do just that when we're talking more details about all of those whites in a future episode. <laughs> And of course, there's loads of different fantastic red wines everywhere in Italy and that's where this overview video really won't allow me to mention them all, but just to give you a quick glance at how many names of fascinating reds, illustrious reds, very popular names, let's browse the appellations and grapes very briefly. There's the outstanding and uniquely Italian Nebbiolo grape from the north in Piedmont, around Barolo, Barbaresco or Lange. The same area also makes wine from Barbera and Dolcetto grapes. There are very distinctive styles and very good. We must mention the Valpolicella area, of course, with its Amarone, Ripasso and Recioto styles, just to name a few, made from blended and often dried grapes of Corvina, Corvinone and Rondinella, just to name a few grapes again. Okay. There's great Pinot Nero or Pinot Noir from Veneto or Alto Adige to the north. Of course, there's Sangiovese from Tuscany and Chianti, but also in Tuscany, as you know, they make those super Tuscans made from Bordeaux grapes like Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon, some of the most reputable and expensive Italian reds. Montepulciano is the grape popular grape at least in Abruzzo, Sagrantino in Umbria, like in Montefalco, which is just absolutely delicious, although not so famous. In the south there's Primitivo, of course, in Puglia, Zinfandel's cousin, but also some good Negro Amaro, Alianico in the Basilicata and the Campania regions, like the famed Alianico del Vulture or Taurasi. Delicious. To finish, let's mention the delicious reds made on the beautiful island of Sicily from, of course, the famed Nero d'Avola, but also, don't disregard those, the Nerello Mascalese and Nerello Capuccio, like those grown on the slope of the Etna volcano. Yes, they do that as well. I mean, there's incredible wonders everywhere in Italy. So much diversity, so much attention to detail, so much passion for expressing the local terroir and tradition, the local taste as well that goes with the local food in every corner of the country. It's just fascinating to explore. And I hope this video, if only one thing, I'm sure you may not have remembered or will not remember all of these names, but I hope it's convinced you to embark with me in this journey we will go through together exploring some of the wonders made in Italy. There will be five or six more episodes coming up about Italy very soon around all of those different styles that we've just glimpsed at today, a new episode every week or every second week on this channel. So make sure to stay tuned for this. And let's leave it here for today and thanks for watching, take care and I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine, of vino, of vini. Arrivederci, ciao ciao.